Um, okay, so I want to tell you today about a very large experiment we conducted. Out of curiosity, how many of you are on Facebook? Raise your hand really high. Um, and how many of you think you might have logged in on election day in 2010? Raise your hand. Okay, you were subjects in this experiment. Um, we can talk about ethics in the Q&A. Um, okay, so um, we know that voting is correlated between friends and family from a long line of beautiful literature and social science. The problem with that knowledge is that we don't know what causes it. Do you choose friends who are like you? You like politics, and so you choose friends who, are like, who like politics, and so the two of you tend to vote. Or do you influence people to vote because you voted? It's a really an interesting and important question that was recently answered at a very small scale in a small data project in a couple of cities in the United States, where David Nickerson, he randomly assigned people during a get out the vote campaign um, to either get a message, please recycle, or a message, please vote. And what he did is he only went to two-person households, and he talked to um, one person in the house, and he recorded the person's name. And what he found was that the person that he talked to when he knocked on the door, they voted more if they got the voting message, but the other person in the household that he didn't talk to also voted more. In fact, it was a 10% bump for the first person and 6% for the second. So there's a 60% of this was translated, and that's just one other person in this person's network. So if you're connected to lots of different people, it could be that we're actually getting more change in the friends of the people that we're trying to reach than we are in the people that we actually reach directly. And this is a really important point that we're gonna be able to study in this very large experiment online, where we're gonna explore the questions, can voting uh, spread online? So we conducted a massive randomized controlled trial with Facebook in 2010. I have this um, beta collaboration going on with Facebook. Um, this is a revolutionary time for social science where we're able for the first time to see the social histories of a billion people. How can you turn that down if you had that kind of opportunity? And we've been working with tr trying to be able to get Facebook to make this data more available to other researchers. But for now, they have a limited number of, of um, partnerships with, with external researchers, and, and we've been fortunate to be one of these individuals. And we've been able not only to do observational studies, but to do experimental studies like this one, where on election day, we showed at the top of the news feed, 60, about 60 million people, this message. And this message says, today is election day. It's, it has a link there where you can look for your polling place. It also has a counter for the number of people who've clicked on this button on the message, which says, I voted. So if you get this message, if you voted, you can you know, click on it, I voted. Um, and also at the bottom, it shows the pictures of, of your friends who have clicked on the I voted button that, that day. And the reason why I wanted to show those is because we wanted to know how much seeing the faces of your friends actually mattered because for another 600,000 people um, we also showed them this which is exactly the same message but they didn't see the faces of their friends so they see today's election day they get the prompt they get information about where their polling place is they get the button but but other than that um, they don't see the faces of their friends and so we can compare those two messages to see how much this social proof concept is important in getting people to actually vote um, we also for 600,000 people showed them nothing and these were things were randomly assigned, which means that there's nothing about you and nothing about your friend that's correlated with the treatment. So if I see a relationship between the treatment and whether or not you voted, or between the treatment and whether or not your friend voted, then that suggested that treatment was actually getting you and your friend to change your behavior. Now we didn't just have the online behavior, we also had the real world behavior of about six million people. Um, what we did is we went to 13 states, we got their, their publicly available voter registration re records, and we matched first name, last name, and birth date um, to, um, to members of, in the Facebook site, people logged in on that day who were adults. And from that merge of 61 million people, we got about 6 million people from those registration records. So we're going to know not just whether or not you say you voted, but whether or not you actually voted in real life, which is really important because when we ask people whether or not they voted, some of them lie. Um, about 20% actually, you go to the record and they didn't really vote because there's so much social pressure. <laughs> so these were the results. Um, it looks like, so clicking on the button, if you saw the faces of your friends, that gave you about a 2% bump in the likelihood of clicking on the button. Um, it also gave you about a 0.2% bump in the likelihood of clicking on that link where you search for your polling place, which can be seen as like an intention to vote measure. Um, but it also increased by four tenths of a percentage point the chance that you actually voted in real life. A single message on election day on election day, when a lot of people had already voted, those guys are all in the denominator, a single message got four tenths of a percent of the population to vote directly. Now we can also compare not just those two messages, but also the social message against the control, the people who saw nothing, and it turns out that effect size is exactly the same. And what that means is the difference between the informational message and no message at all was zero percent. So what does that mean? 
That means the only thing in this message that was driving the behavior change was seeing the faces of your friends. That's the only thing that made a difference, was seeing the faces of your friends, the social proof. And it's no wonder that Facebook wants to put you know, people's faces underneath their ads. It's no wonder that Google wants to have your friends' reviews of products appear on the right-hand side of the search page. This is tremendously effective at getting people to change their behavior, whether it's for marketing or whether it's for something good, like getting us all to participate in politics. Now, this is not why we did the experiment. That would be cool enough to be able to, to say those kinds of things, but what we wanted to do is we wanted to, to know whether or not the friends of the people who received the treatment voted more than the friends of the, of the people in the control group. Um, and we also wanted to differentiate between close friends, the people you're most likely to be friends with in real life, and friends that are not close, you know, like your Facebook friends, like that guy, Harry, who you don't know if you're friends with him or not, but he friended you and you just clicked OK. So we, we wanted to know this because in a lot of our real world studies, what we find is that it's the close, deep, meaningful, real world ties that have the strongest impact on your behavior. And we expected to define that here as well. And in, in, a, in a separate study, we showed that it's actually very easy to, to predict who your best friend is among um, all your Facebook friends. Um, and in fact, we can do this with about 84% accuracy. You give me your Facebook data, and I'll, I'll predict who amongst your Facebook friends is your best friend in real life. And it's basically just the number of contacts, the amount of communication you have with, with, with these individuals. Now, this is a big data problem, not because the 61 million people here, but because of all the friendships we have to deal with in the analysis. And so we had 8.3 billion of these non-close face, face friends, Facebook friends that we needed to analyze. 767 million close friends, these are your, to the 10 friends on Facebook that you're most likely to have a real-world relationship with, and 16 billion close friends of close friends. I would have lo loved to go out to friends of friends of friends, but in this case, it would have been too expensive even for the, the Facebook cluster. And so we just, we just kept out to two degrees of separation in, in the analysis. And this is a distribution. Most people have um, you know, sort of a few friends, say 10 to 100 friends, but then there are a few people who have thousands of these friends and friends of friends. Now that's a picture of the network. It's obviously not the whole thing because there's not 61 million dots in there. Each dot is a, uh, each circle is a person. Each line is a relationship. But it's for Abilene, Texas, and it just gives you an idea. The red dots are the people who clicked on the I voted button. The white dots are the people who didn't. This is not how we're doing the analysis. We're not comparing whether or not you voted to whether or not your friend voted. We're comparing whether or not your friend got treated, which is an instrument for whether or not you voted, to see whether or not you voted. So the treatment of your friend and whether or not you voted, because there's not going to be anything that's correlated with you or with your friend. Um, with that treatment other than the impact that it has on, on your particular voting behavior. And these are our results. This is clicking in the I voted button. What we did is we actually, um, we increased from weakest tie to strongest tie. So those are your, your, you know, that guy Harry who you clicked on, you have no idea who he is. And this is your absolute best friend in real life. And what you can see is that the blue tr uh, diamonds up there, they get bigger and bigger and bigger. What this means is that you're more likely to click on the I voted button um, the, the more your, your close friends were treated in this experience, the more of them received this, this particular message. And this is not only true for clicking the I voted button, it's true for real world voting. And in fact, one of the things that we found here was really interesting is that none of those other people on Facebook mattered. It was only your 10 closest friends that mattered. It was those people that were driving all of the effect of the experiment. And when we add up all of those friendships, even though the percent uh, per friend is actually really small, that, that effect size is really small, it's actually the case that they're driving over 80% of the total effect. Directly, the message got about 60,000 people to vote, but indirectly, it got an extra 280,000 people to vote. So a single message on, on, on Facebook on election day got a third of a million extra people to vote. Just one tiny little message. And just think about what we could do with repeated messages and with a variety of different contexts, not just in politics, but in health and, and in other, other things. So the other thing is that we, we have a brand new world. We have all this metadata online. We should be finding out what our experiments are doing, not just the people we target, but to the people who are the friends of the people we target. Because if you don't do that, you're missing the whole story. We could have done this experiment and thought, oh, well, we only got 60,000 people to change their behavior, big deal. But instead, it was a third of a million because we went out just one degree of separation. This is crucial, and this is what we have the opportunity to do for the first time with collaborations um, like companies like Facebook. So future work, we're doing all kinds of observational and experimental studies with Facebook. We've got stuff on politics. We've got stuff where we estimate your ideology, whether you're liberal or conservative online. Um, we've got stuff on, on who you get your, your jobs from, and we're able to do this cross uh, country in, in 54 different countries, and also analyzing whether or not happiness spreads a network using instruments like whether or not it rains on you. In fact, that stays kind of cool. We've asked the question, if it's raining on your friend in New York, does it make you a little less happy here in San Diego? And the answer is yes. Thanks to all these guys. <laughs>